Brothers and sisters, I'm so excited to once again come into your world with the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And wherever you are in the world, your life will never be the same again. We are dealing with the greatest secret that God told me about prayer. And it has a subtitle, and the subtitle is prayer that God cannot ignore. Meaning, if you are here today, heaven shall answer you. If you are not looking for answers, then you are not in the right platform. But if you are somebody who is saying, Apostle, I've been looking for answers. Today is your day. Because what I'm about to talk to you about is a secret that the devil does not want you to know. And once you get hold of this secret, you are going to cause problems in the kingdom of darkness. Amen. You are going to be a troublemaker oh, yeah. because whatever will proceed from your mouth, heaven shall see to it that it comes to pass. Have you ever read, and the Bible said a statement like, none of Samuel's words fell down to the ground. Why none of Samuel's words never fell to the ground? It means Samuel knew something. And I'm here today to tell you there is a secret to your prayer. Mark chapter 11, and we read verses 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them, and ye shall have them. Believe it or not, the secret is in there. And once I unlock it by the power of the Holy Spirit, your life shall never be the same again. Notice, if you may, that Jesus himself here is the one that is speaking. And he is saying what he's saying after he had cast a fig tree. We all know that Jesus cast a fig tree. And after that, the disciples were amazed. They went and checked and they realized that the tree had dried. Even its roots had dried. They went to Jesus and said, Master, even the roots have dried. And Jesus turned and said to them, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that you have received them and ye shall have them. So the first thing you do before you pray is desire. This scripture has been misinterpreted, misquoted, and the very same scripture that is to unlock the destiny of many has been abused. According to Jesus' words, before you pray, you must have a desire. And I then can boldly tell you that the God we serve does not necessarily answer prayer, but God answers desire. Angels, they move when there is prayer. Yes, sir. But remember, angels don't move unless God say to them they must move. But what moves God is not even prayer. That's why everybody prays. But not everybody has their answer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Africa, we are the most prayerful continent. Mm. But we are still trying to come out of the cocoon. Mm. It means it is not just about prayer. Mm. There is something in prayer that one must get hold of. That will cause God not to ignore their prayer. So many people, they go into the prayer closet. Without a desire. Yet Jesus said, before you pray, have a desire. 
The biggest problem, and hear me, and if you can hear me, you are gone. The biggest problem is one will just have prayer in their spirit. And they will go to their prayer closet for three hours. And they will come out feeling like they have done something. Yet at night, they will be pulled out by the same demons they were binding. It's because God is not so much moved by prayer, but God is moved by desire. Uh, say go deep, Apostle. Meaning prayer should be a pouring out of what you desire. So every time you pray, it should be you pouring out that which you desire. Meaning if you are not able to pour out your desires, according to what we have read, you shall not have what you have prayed for. I want you to understand that according to the Bible, Pastor Brian, Matthew 12, I believe is verse 34. It says, out of the abundance of the heart, yes, the mouth shall speak. Yes. So it is not so much about what the mouth is saying, but it is so much about what is in the heart. No wonder why God says, before you call, I shall answer you. Yes, so what is God answering if you have not called? He's answering that which is in the heart and what is in the heart desire that's why your mouth can say one thing but your desire can say another thing so god is not answering what you are saying with your mouth but god rather is answering that which you desire brothers and sisters this is a prayer that god cannot ignore i believe you are ready in the holy ghost some of you, the years you lost, God shall restore you those years. I'm talking about things that you lost, opportunities that you lost. They shall be restoration in the name of Jesus. Because once you open your mouth, heaven shall move on your behalf. And something is going to take place. I said something is going to take place today. Something is going to take place. By power and by fire, something is going to take place. And your life shall never be the same again. So before your knees hit the floor, you must have what? A desire. So don't just be excited because you're about to enter into prayer. So pause a little bit and check your desire. You are getting it. Pastor Brian is getting it. So before you call, I shall answer. Meaning God is not just answering what you say. Before, Because he, said, he didn't say after you call. It's before you call. Meaning there is somewhere where God will judge your prayer before it comes out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And desire is what we are talking about. I, I feel like going deeper. So the problem is going to prayer without desire. And God answers what? Desire. Praise the Lord everybody. So people have left the desire in the same scripture that we have read. So they will say to you, whatsoever you ask, whatsoever you pray for because in their mind that desire there is there by a mistake or it does not carry something yet desire there is a key to everything the reason why christians they pray and they don't see answers is because they have left out desire when hannah prayed god did not answer her needs god answered her desire it was God answering Hannah's desire. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hannah's prayer was not out of jealousy. It was out of desire. Yes, and whenever God sees a desire, God acts. Your problem is you have based your prayers around a need. You think because you have a need, heaven should attend to your need. Yes, sir. Yet everyone has a need. Yes, sir. But not everyone has a desire. Let's break it down. Maybe you guys will understand what I'm saying. The Greek word for desire is the word apitomia. Apitomia. Which then also can be the word telo. And others, they say it's teho. But the Greek word is epitemia. That means this is not your merely a simple wish. No. 
But this is a deep-seated craving, an intense longing for a certain thing to come to pass that it bothers you every day. As long as you are not seeing it coming to pass, you, you are bothered yes, by the fact that it's not coming to pass. Then when you are bothered by it not coming to pass, you know what is now operating is not a need but a desire. Yes, Without desire, epitomia, there is no prayer. Meaning desire needs to be developed deeply before you open your mouth for prayer or ask anything in prayer. So you need to develop desire. Because once desire is developed, once tello is developed, tello sends you into the prayer closet. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. You won't have to force yourself to pray. Once the tello is ignited, you find yourself pray. That's why the Bible says, and Hannah, year after year, regardless of what Penina was doing to her, she went to the house of God and she continued to pray. I mean, if you study, you realize that Hannah was barren for about 28 years. 28 years, brothers and sisters, is a long time. But the Bible says year after year, she went to the house of God. What kept Hannah going to Shiloh? Yet she was not seeing answers. Desire, brothers and sisters. Because when you have desire, you can't help but pray. When you have a need, you pray two times. If it does not happen, you will change it. So desire will accompany prayer. But when prayer gets into the throne room of God, God will not look for prayer, will look for desire. Desire will accompany prayer. But when prayer gets to the throne room, God does not look for prayer. He asks prayer, where is your desire? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if prayer has no desire, God will say, go collect desire. Yes, sir. Because I answer desire. Yes, sir. This is the greatest secret God told me about prayer. Prayer is a follower of desire. Not desire being a follower of prayer. So you don't pray and desire. You desire and you pray. Once your desire is crumpled, your prayer is crumpled, and you are going to get a crumpled answer. So, brothers and sisters, work on your epitomia. Work on your desire. Develop desire. Don't pray for the house first. Desire it. Then pray for it. How do you work on your desire when it comes to such, to such things? You visit houses. You do some house viewing. Yes, and while it's your viewing, you are working on your desire. Aya. Aya. You know what Jeremiah said? He said, it's like fire. Shutting on my bones. Yes, and I cannot contain it. Meaning the word of God, right? Had developed a desire to be spoken out yes, by this gentleman. That the moment he refused, the word of God fought inside him. And he had no choice but to release it. Yes, sir. So it had a desire to be spoken. I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying. So he himself, who was refusing to release it, yes, could not stand the desire that the word had in him. So when you begin to view houses, Kalina Mahande, when you begin to view properties, you begin to view uh, cars, whatever that is, you begin to view places, yes, institutions, you begin to develop a desire. I remember when I, when I bought my first car years ago. That was a long time. My first car, by the way, was a Mercedes-Benz. Years ago. That's, been a, that's a long time. It's been a long, long, long time. And believe it or not, my last born does not even know that car. My second born, he, he was there. No, no, no. He actually found it there, but he doesn't really remember it. <laughs> Are we together? Yes, Watch this now. What happened was I had no money in my bank account. And when I say I had no money, I think I had like 7000 or something. That's the money I had. I was broke. Like Moses when he broke the Ten Commandments. But I had a desire. I did not look at my bank account. 
Because God does not look at your bank account. God looks at your desire. Yes, sir. I went to, uh, I remember I told my younger brother here. He will testify. He was there. One time he was cooking himself. He was cooking. Then I went to the kitchen and I said to him, I want to buy a car. One thing about him, he always believed whatever I say. Right? So he was like, wow, what kind of a car? And I said to him, there is this Hendai of this other guy. He, he remembers. That Hendai, because that guy, <laughs> desire, somebody say desire. desire. We were coming back from Limpompo. And as we were driving, he allowed me to drive that car. Are we together? So the, the gear control was so soft that I felt like, Evan, this car uh, is a car. So while I was in that car driving it, when I'm moving the, the gear controller there, guess what? Desire is developed. When he was cooking we are home now, all of a sudden, I want to buy a car. I don't have the money, but I have the desire. You're not hearing what I'm saying. But the desire did not just come out of nowhere. I had to be in a certain environment. I had to feel how it feels like to walk around a mansion. You are not hearing what I'm saying. Then I said to him, I want to buy this car. Then we went. We started now viewing. I was with him. We were together like this. When we were viewing, we found that car. It was expensive. And when we found it, I got inside. Then I said to him, I'm coming back. We left. But as we were going home, we are passing by another place where they sell cars. And I looked, and there they were selling Ferraris and all these cars. As I looked, I saw a Mercedes Benz. It was as if the car was talking to me. It was as if the car was saying, come to me, Apostle. Come pick me. I've been here for so long. I remember I said to him, look at this car. I held my head, the rim. I remember it was an aluminum rim. Mm. The rim was speaking in tongues. Yes, sir. We went in. Me being me, I said, give me the keys. The gentleman gave me the keys. I went inside the car. When I said the smell of the car, mm. ministered to me. It was as if the car was now telling me, yes, sir. I want to go home with you. The smell of the car. When, the moment I entered, mm. I looked at him. I said, I'm buying this car. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said, I remember, I said, do you, he said to me, do you know what car is this? I said, I know. He said, this is Mac Mac. That's what he said to me, meaning this is a Mercedes Benz. He was like, this is Mac Mac. I said, I'm buying Mac Mac. He said, are you sure? I said, I'm buying Mac Mac. He shook his head like this. And they gave me keys. I started it when it was there. Oh, yeah. When the car went on, I went out, I came in, I sat, I began to bubble up in tongues. But remember, what caused me to bubble up was desire. Yes, I did not bubble up when I was outside by looking at it. Ah. I entered inside and desire forced me to pray. I don't know if you guys are getting what I'm saying. I had desired that other one, but when we went to check it, I didn't pray. We just went to check it. But when I was in this one now, desire forced me to pray. They said documents. We gave them my documents. They did their thing. They said, unfortunately, sir, you don't qualify. He said, do you have other supporting documents? I said to him, no. But the Holy Spirit said, yes, you do. I said, I have documents that prove that every month I pay a certain amount of money to a certain account. He said, what is that account for? I said, it's an account of another man but I'm paying tithe to it. So I can produce proof that I pay tithe, but there's money going. So I have money coming in, but I'm, there's a certain amount of money I'm taking it here. He didn't understand it. He didn't understand what I was talking about. He just said, bring those documents. I went, we printed, we came. He said, I don't think this will help us, but let's put them. He began to motivate and all of that. They came back, declined. We went home. First thing in the morning, we went back. I said, try these documents again. They tried them. They said, sir, you don't qualify. Unless you bring other documents, we won't help you. I was outside standing like this, looking at that car. Desire. Around five, they were closing. We left. In the morning, the following day, I was there. This is not a story. This is not a myth. My younger brother was there. I stood outside. Now they were no longer entertaining me, those brothers. 
When they see me like this, they just see me outside. They just focus on their job. At five, they closed. We went home. The following day, I was there again. I started praying. Then the fifth day, I had 7,000 in my account. This is a true story. The fifth day, the man of God that I was with that time, he was building a church. He called me, and I was part of the people that were giving towards that project. He called me that they are roofing, but there are certain things that are missing, right? And in his calling, he was not calling me for money. No, the devil is a liar. He was calling me for prayer, right? And he was telling me that they need to be done before the rainy season, roofing. When he called me and he told me that, I sat down. Before I prayed, I said, wait a minute. I have money here, and it can't meet my need. Let it become my seed. Then I took that last money. He shook his head. He said, now, what about the deposit? Because those guys, they said, I must take out at least 60,000 deposit. And I had 7,000. And that money became my seed. I sent it to him. The man of God could not believe it. It was a lot at that time. <laughs> he called me. He said, did you just send money? I said, yes, I sent money. He started praying for me. 15 minutes after that, a man of God from Pretoria called me. And he's calling me. He says to me, give me your account. His first deposit was 30,000 rents into my account out of nowhere. Then when, he, when it entered, I was shocked. It was a lot of money. I was like, wow. And as I was calling him, I said to him, thank you so much. Thank you so much. He said, no, don't thank me. I'm sowing into your life for prophetic grace. And this man, I was looking up to him. That's what he said. Then, when we're there now, I was talking to these guys. Guys, I have 30,000. They said, ah, my friend, just try to get to 50. And I'm thinking, where can I get 50 now so that we can try this thing? He then says to me, he's sending another money in the next uh, two hours. Then while I was waiting, about five minutes, money entered. It was another 30,000. Now I had 60,000. I said to the guys, put now, I have the deposit, put it there. They put it like this. It came, it said declined. They closed, we went home. We went Saturday morning. We were there. They said, now take it to at least 120. Let's see what will happen. Brothers and sisters, you have never heard me talk about any of my testimonies. But here I'm showing you the power of desire. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'm not talking about my life now. I'm talking about my life there. If you cannot see what I'm talking about in me, it will be difficult for you to follow it. Yes, sir. And I'm talking about there. And I'm saying this with all humility. So that those who have this thing in their mind that people are just being braggadocious when they testify. So you understand it's not me. But this is long time, not now. If I was braggadocious, you will know he's being braggadocious. Now watch this. Saturday we went there. It didn't work. Monday morning, Uncle Peter, we were there. And I was standing like this. Then the boss came in. Found and said, hey, this guy, I saw him last week, Tuesday. He's here. Can we help this guy? They said, ah, nothing is happening. He said, let me call another lead. He called said, okay, can you try to speak to these people? One, two, three, four, five. While he's, I was there. He says, okay, how much deposit do you have? I said, 60. This is a true story. This is a true story. He went, spoke to this other lady. She works in that company. Then he was like, my friend, 45,000 deposit will work. I said, eh? I looked at him. I said, eh? Then he said, he said, approved. I thought he was joking. He says to me, now you need insurance for you to take out the car. And it was those days that you can't take out a car when those days entered without an insurance, those early days. I said, what do I do? He said, don't worry, there's a company I know, they'll call you now. I gave them your number. Mm. Brothers and sisters, when I left, I was with my younger brother. Yes, sir. We left on a Benz. Hey. <laughs> we left on a Benz. Mm. My wife at that time, when I was busy with all this process, she didn't know. She would see us go and with my younger brother. And I'd ask my brother not to tell him. Mm. When I went, came back home like this, I was on a Mac Mac. I came, my wife came out like this. She looks at like, whose car is this? I said, it's mine. She just passed me looking for the owner of the car. She was like, whose car is this? I said, this is my car. She just looked at me like this. She didn't believe it. She went inside. I went with her. I said, it's my car. And I had papers. She was not interested in looking at the papers. The next thing, 
She saw me post on Facebook that God is good. She said, are you serious? I said, this, this, this is the car. She said, is this our car? I said, this is our car. <laughs> you are joking. I'm telling you now, desire. Look at me. If I did not have a desire, one day like this, I would have given up. My, my third house, right, that I bought years ago, right, third house, I was told I will never afford it by an agent. The agent told me I'll never afford it. Two years later, I came and I bought that house. Two years later. Because the time I went there, they looked at me, looked at my things. They said, ah, this one is too expensive for you. Desire. And that was years ago, before even my uh, second born was born. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Say with me, desire. desire. So how do you develop desire? You develop desire by going into places. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what God said to Abraham? As far as your eyes will see. Meaning as long as you are blind, I'm limited. But the, the moment you see, I the Lord will do. You see, I will do the rest. Because once you see, there is desire. That's why Jesus said, you heard that if you sleep with a woman who's not your wife, you have committed adultery. But I say unto you, if you look at a woman lustfully, meaning with a desire, you have already committed a sin. Look how powerful desire is. So heaven responds to a desire. Say, Lord, work on my desire. So you see that sometimes you can be praying and praying and nothing is happening. Not because God does not want to do anything. It's because you have been a Christian for 20 years, for 15 years without a desire. You think just by praying things will happen. Say desire. desire. Develop your desires, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Develop your desire to a level where prayer begins to pour out. Out of you. Hallelujah. Jesus was telling the disciples, for me to kill this tree, I had a desire. That's why he was saying, whatsoever ye desire. Yet he was talking about a tree. Meaning for me to cast this tree, it did not just happen. I had a desire to do it. Hallelujah. What is prayer? I've taught a lot about prayer. But in this case... In this message, write this down. Prayer, please write it down and never forget it. Prayer is the oral expression of desire. So if somebody is going to ask you what is prayer, the oral expression of desire. Yes, Hallelujah. The blind will come to Jesus and Jesus will ask them, what do you want me to do for you? A seemingly pointless question because I mean, I mean, I mean, the person is blind. Jesus can see the person is blind. Yes, but Jesus will ask them, what do you want me to do for you? Yes, Are we together? Yes. It was necessary for them to express that which they desire. Mm. Because God does not answer because you have a need. <laughs> Say, I'm blind. He knows I'm blind. No! What do you want? What do you desire? Because heaven moves when there is a desire. How do you really work on your desire as a child of God? Because so far, I've told you what you can do on the outside. But you as a believer, because your desire cannot be based on material things or things that are perishable. But as a child of God, how do you develop and how do you work on your desire? By getting into the word. When you know that he became poor so that you can become rich. I, uh, you then know that I am not sinning by desiring to be. Oh, Lord. I am not sinning by desiring to be in good health. Hallelujah. Because by his stripes we were healed. Say glory somebody. So when you get into the word, Kalia, your desire changes. You will know things that belong to you. Glory be to God. Think about this because I don't have time. Think about this this way. If I was to snatch your wallet from you, you will come after me. You will fight with everything that is in you. Regardless of the stature. And the reason why you are fighting is because you know it belongs to you. Hence, you are what? You are fighting. 
Glory be to God. So when you get into the word, you will know that certain things belong to you. Hence, you will fight when the enemy shows you another thing. You will say, but that's not what the word says about me. This is not in the will of God concerning my life. This is not what God said about me. This belongs to me here. I'm not an intruder here. I'm not somebody uh, uh, jumping fence and came, coming in here as a thief. No. Hallelujah. You have a lamp on your body. Desire to see healing taking place. Glory be to God. You are sick. No. What is your desire? What is your desire? Glory be to God. Develop your epitamia, brothers and sisters. Develop desire. And right now, the Lord has told us through Apostle on Wednesday that this is our 90 days of turnaround. The mouthpiece of God has spoken. Hallelujah. And now you need to desire to see turn around. Turn around in every area of your life. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. Your manager, your boss, right, can decide what your income is. Right? Like in terms of your salary. But your manager, your boss cannot decide what comes into your account. Cannot, dis not, cannot decide who blesses you and who favors you. Heaven is responsible for that. So never limit God. Uh, never limit God. He said, even in the desert, water shall come out. I will make a way where there is no way. Brothers and sisters, this is the gospel according to Apostle Mism, so I get credit. That the God we serve is not dead but alive. Yes, 